don't put them in your home. They're, um, they're not pets. They're wild animals and they need to be treated as so they're not your dog or your cat that you can hold and pet and love and they're they're wild animals they need to be treated as such I would not advise anybody you know go ahead and, and continue to love primates but leave them where they need to be don't do it um, it's a lot of work it's constant care it's not like a dog or a cat they need the attention they need the care they need the loving they need you know, there's proper food, plus the fact that you can't find a vet usually that can deal with them because they don't know anything about them. Um, it's, it's simply trial and error. The biggest problem is that they're a wild animal. They were born wild and there's no way you're going to tame a monkey. Uh, they're always going to be wild. It was a different experience. Actually, got to know what it was like to live with a monkey and spend time with a monkey and play with one. But I would never do it again. Just knowing how they are and that they're wild animals, and they belong with other wild animals, not with humans. So no, I would never do it again. Don't buy it. <laughs> they they're cute and cuddly when they're babies, but when they get older, you can't, you can't control them. I mean, I can't get her out of a cage anymore. I mean, she's too strong. There are some things that are not meant to be domesticated, and you can't. Um, and you have to love them for what they are, and let them live in, the, in, a, in a, the environment that they should be living in. And it's not a cage. You just can't keep them as pets that most people think of as pets like cats and dogs. They're not meant to be that way. I advise nobody not to get them. I mean, I have a lot of people that said, oh, I've always wanted a monkey. No, you wouldn't. It's a 24-hour care, seven days a week. It was just, became a daily chore. I love him to death, and I still do. It hurts me to give him up. But he has really gotten hard to take care of. If I can go back to the day where I first saw her, I would have left her. Um, I know now from having her for over four and a half years, it was not in her best interest. Um, she, her, she no longer could get out and play on a leash in the house or go outside and swim in the pool. Uh, she had to be caged up, you know, and not being able to get her exercise. Uh, I sit and I look at her and I get so sad thinking, oh, you know, what can I do for her? What more can I do for her? And they're, you can't. They cannot be just left alone in the house in a cage. You'd have to have outside cages, and there needs to be somebody with them all the time to take care of them. And it's just, it's a, a major commitment, and I would give it serious consideration before I'd even consider it. Would I do it again, though? No. Because it's a lifetime commitment. It's not mm -hmm. right. It's not, it's not, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a commitment like raising a kid. You just don't go play with them when you want to. You just don't go feed them when you want to. You're there every day. Of course, the, the tied down part didn't bother me. I got a farm, that's why I bought a farm for. I don't care about going nowhere. That didn't bother me. But I say, if I get sick, who's gonna take care of me? You don't call in a neighbor to, to feed and water Luke. I'm gonna say Luke because I haven't had any other monkeys. Like you would your pet dog or your bird or something like that or your cows if you got them outside. You don't call nobody in. You're the only one who can get close to that cage and react with it. And, and, and he has to have a certain amount of reaction, mm -hmm. uh, interaction in order to, for his needs of water, sanitizing stuff, cleaning stuff, and feed. And he has to also have time for play with you. That is very critical in his life, too. It's, and we always took, I especially, took time every night to sit down and do play with him. Every night. I've spanked him many times that he's bit me. But it don't phase him. They'll just look at you and three seconds later they're turning around and they'll do the same thing that you tried to teach them not to. You can't. You can't teach them. I mean, they're wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, the wild cannot be taken out of them. They should uh, definitely talk to previous monkey owners. Um, and really see what happens and, and um, see that it's not a forever thing. You know, they're very cute and sweet as babies, but when they grow up, um, they're not the same. So at some point in time, 
you go through either giving them up because they've permanently injured someone and you hate them and or you realize the potential that exists there for that to happen and um, a lot of it is out of frustration because they're not meant to be kept the way we want to keep them. She was born a wild animal and she's still a wild animal. She'll always be a wild animal. Uh, there is no way that you can domesticate or tame a monkey. It's cruel. Don't get one. Don't put them through that. Don't take them out of their own environment. Um, they need to be around their own kind. If you want to see one, go to a zoo. I feel bad that uh, four and a half years of April's life was kept in my home. We gave her love, attention, everything we possibly could. Um, go to a zoo. That's all I can say. Don't buy one because they're nothing what you would expect or what you would hope or what you dreamed. Um, as much as I, I love her, I'll never get another one. I can't do that to another primate. Um, it's cruel. It, it, at first you may have these dreams and hopes of, oh yeah, everybody's going to look at me and I'm going to have my baby monkey beside of me. She's going to be dressed up and pretty and and I'm going to teach her this and that. You can't. Primates, they belong out in trees playing with other primates. and It is just so cruel to take them away from you know, the life they should have had and put them in a cage somewhere. Their every need has to come from you. When you buy one, your life completely changes because, I mean, you're there, they're there daily. You have to change them, clean up after them daily, feed them. When they do things wrong, if they, I've had so many things tore up in my house by him that I have actually, you know, like gone to replace where my husband wouldn't know anything about it just to keep him out of trouble. But, I mean, they will destroy things in your house. And not, they don't do it out of meanness, it's just in their nature. They're not made, they're not like a dog or a cat. They're nothing like a dog and a cat. You can't make them act the way you want them to act. You know, it'd be nice if you could, but you can't. I've been bit, I know, a hundred times, if not more. But, I mean, as far as like, you know, I've just gotten used to it, you know, since I've had him. And I've, you know, that's just part of it. You can expect to be bit many, many times. And, uh, but when it comes to them biting smaller children, he'll do, he'll bite deeper bites on my son than, you know, what he will on me if he sees any kind of emotion between my little boy and me, it just drives him wild. And if he's loose at the time, or if he can get loose, he goes after Derek, that's my son. He'll go after him, and I mean, I literally have to pull him off, you know, of him. Well, I got him on his leash, and got him out the cage, but he wanted to head for another part of the house, and all I did was said no. I pulled on the leash, just tugged just a little bit and said no, and before I even knew what happened, he was, he jumped up, grabbed hold of my shirt, my chest area, and was ripping my neck. I mean, it was, not, it was just like crunching apples. That was my hand. And he kept doing that until I could get enough leash slack up that I could jerk him off. I wasn't going to hit him. I come close, but I, I didn't. So I could jerk him off, but I had too much slack. I couldn't jerk him off immediately. Well, when I did finally jerk him off back down to the floor, he came up again and got me hold my chest again, but this time he got my arm. So that was our first and last time for about a year that we went for a walk. I had her on uh, a dog run where she has the run of the back the backyard and all of a sudden my daughter started screaming get her off of me get her off of me and I turned around and there was blood all over and I managed to get her free and my daughter ran in the house and 
immediately passed out on me. My daughter got bit pretty severely on the face and we ended up in the emergency room and from that point on it was animal control and infectious disease control and it was a nightmare. And you know the, the upshot of the whole thing is now that we're both frightened uh, and you can't trust her. She does not like my kids. Uh, grandkids, anybody, so no kids. <laughs> the only time she's out of the cage is when she's with me only. Mm -hmm. She's still an animal, and you can't trust animals. And that's the way I've, I've had her. For the six years I've had her, she's only been out. If I'm home alone, she's out in the house running about and playing. And if there's people, I will not let her out of the cage. I won't even let people go close to the cage. Something that they never tell you when you get a monkey is that this natural tendencies are going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. That's not nothing to get rid of. You know, and the natural thing is they, they are fighters, they, you know, survivors, and they mm -hmm. do what they think to keep, uh, you know, I think that the ranking, try to go up the ranking as if, if anybody does understand that, and monkeys they should, um, there's always a ladder of command that they try to climb. Both my daughters have been bit. I, now ex-wife's been bit up pretty good a few times. Um, even a couple guests, Kira, the owner of Zoe, was bit up. Uh, the other friend of mine who has uh, Joey also was bit. So, and they're all un unwarranted, you know, attacks and something that I can deal with at this point. Don't have a problem with, but I, potentials is there for any of them actually. I've been bitten several times by April within this past year. Um, when she was small, the bites really weren't that much. The scratches, you know, I have little scars, you know, where she, her just fingernails were so thin and sharp. She bit me uh, back in February where I had taken her out of her cage and I was standing at the doorway and she had a bottle in her mouth just with the door, the screen door closing and making a noise and a car went by. She went to jump from my arms and I tried to hold on to her and she clamped onto my hand and just held. Uh, it was a, a pretty good gash on my hand. The blood was dripping all over the carpet and everything. And I still have numbness on my small finger from that bite. She's bitten me other times before. She's bit my husband. Um, his cheek, leaving a scar there. Um, the children, my daughter never would have nothing to do with her because she bit her once on the back of her calf when she was, I guess, the primate April was probably about two and a half years and she got loose and my daughter ran to her bedroom. Well, April followed her and grabbed hold of her calf and bit her. So it, it made a pretty good bruise on her. My son, now he's been bitten I think on his arm once by her, but you know, as far as contact, only my son and I have contact on the outside of the cage because of her biting. She had gone through a stage where uh, for like three days in a row, she attacked me viciously. I mean, she she uh, didn't bite and just jump off. She bites and rips and bites repeatedly, and uh, I had bite marks up my arm, on my back, and. Um, I had gotten to a point where I was afraid to take her out of a cage. He's got a thing about small kids. I mean, if he can get loose, if he sees a small child, I mean, he will be on that child, you know, biting. And there's just been, you know, like, we've had two instances, our neighbors back behind us, two little boys, where he, I've had him out in the backyard where I had him restrained, and uh, he had gotten loose two separate times on two separate occasions and the little boys back behind us where I mean they didn't even know it was coming I mean and I didn't even know it was that he was loose until it was too late but he had jumped both little boys and you know was biting him in several you know they just keep biting but um but they're just they're not safe around small children If you don't clean that cage every day, your house is going to smell like an outhouse. <laughs> and it draws a lot of flies. I don't care how good you keep doors closed. There's a lot of things you don't consider and don't, you're not aware of unless you 
do it. And so I wouldn't advise nobody to do it. And it's not right to throw a monkey in some little shed somewhere out in the backyard. She doesn't want to leave her diaper on and trying to keep her cage clean when she craps everywhere. And as far as throwing stuff and, you know, she likes fruits and vegetables and things, but she throws stuff out of her cage. And it's just, I mean, it's a constant cleaning process is what it is. They're messy. Even when they eat, they're messy. Um, you have to keep a diaper on him if you keep him in the house. And he still ripped his diaper off and he'd throw poop all over. If he had the chance to, I had to tape his diaper down. No, they're not clean animals to have in a house. As long as you can get in and clean, you can kind of keep ahead of it. But you have to get used to it and you have to accept that you're going to have excrement on, <laughs> on the floor and on the walls. Uh, it's something that you have to learn to live with. Um, there's, it smells, you know, it doesn't smell good. She used to get daily baths, which was fun because we'd fill the tub up and, you know, she'd dive down and swim and play in the bubbles and everything. But once she got to the point where that was no longer what she wanted, you know, it was just what I wanted, not her, then she would start escaping, jumping, water going everywhere, uh, biting, pulling hair, um, scratching, and it got to a point where she didn't get the bath. So inside her cage, just trying to clean her hands and her feet and her bottom, you don't do it. I mean, I can clean her hands, but as far as the rest of her, if something comes at her, she's going to bite. And when she bites, you're going to regret it. Uh, if feces, you know, when she would go to the bathroom, if she stepped on it with her hands or her feet, she'd look at it, smell of it, and it's going to go wherever she can sling it to get it off of her. So you've got that. You've got, she has a drop pan in her cage that, you know, you had to clean because the urine and the feces is just so strong. It would, you, if you leave your home, come back a couple hours later, you open the door, you know she's, she's there, you smell it immediately. And it's not something that you can get out of your home easy. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of cleaning and frustration. So, no, they're basically not clean animals. To... You're basically tied down to home because, you know, there's, you can't find, you can't just call a babysitter and have them come watch your monkey. I mean, they have, especially if the monkey doesn't know them. And you're, like I said, you're tied down. You can't go on a vacation and go to a hotel and take a monkey with you and you can't very well go off and leave them at the house by themselves for a week. She's very protective of me I and mean, if anybody comes around in my house she, she'll snag at them, scratch them and stuff. She got to hold my aunt, drew blood on her face and her arm. He has hurt me. He gouged my eyes, which he probably could have blinded me. I couldn't see for 10 days. There's been a couple times he has bit Melissa. He's never drawn blood, but he bruised her. He has scratched her a couple times. Um, but other people, yeah, he probably would bite them because they can't even come in the house. It's been hard. He's a lot of work. Monkeys are very expensive. They're very smelly. <laughs> I mean, she's a sweetheart, you know, I, but she's a wild animal. She needs to be in a place where she can be with other wild animals and and go uh, do things monkeys do and not be locked in a small cage in a, in a room in a house. It's not fair for them to have to spend that much time in clothes, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, they can't, they deserve more and, you know, they deserve to be around other monkeys and they're not, I thought I could humanize him in a way because, you know, he's always felt like my second child and you can't. It would aggravate her to see someone coming in her home, and I told him, I said, she's not on pl it, it, exhibition here, you know, she's not a freak show or anything, and, and I was always constantly on guard when someone did come to my house. Don't get around the cage. She will bite. She will scratch. My own mother will not come to my home because she has a fear of April. She got loose one time when my mother and my father were up there babysitting for me and they sit in their cars because they would not go in the house they knew you know how dangerous it could be I was going to update my insurance uh -huh. the State Farm insurance he came in there 
Made an appointment, got it all settled through town. He had to come down and take some pictures. Oh, you didn't tell me you had a monkey. Yeah, he's in the steel cage, though. I even got wire on the side so he can't reach through when you walk through the hall there and even grab you. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't. If you got it in your house anywhere, he says, no, we cannot. He said, we will not. He said, they won't let me. We cannot have a homeowner's insurance with a monkey. And there's one, uh, a ferret. He mm -hmm. named two animals, a ferret yeah. and a monkey. We will not insure because of the liability that monkeys are unpredictable. They can grab people, steal their glasses, hurt them, bite them, whatever. Or they can get out of their cage and destroy your house. It's a very a lifelong, a lifelong commitment, time consuming. They're very intelligent and you basically have to treat them as, as if they were your own child. You can't just leave them in a cage in a, in a room by themselves and ignore them. You got to socialize with them on a daily basis. And it is a major burden. Well, when he first came there, he was very scared. I had a real hard time trying to feed him. He, he was mean then, actually, because he was scared. He was biting, scratching. I mean, I had this naked monkey in my house. I had no clue what to feed him, what to do for him. He, he's a lot of work. I wouldn't recommend anyone having him in, as a pet. They're too demanding. They're too, they're just mean. They bite, they scratch, they don't like people. They, they hurt themselves in homes and they hurt people. They hurt people. They, they do, they don't like people. She would get angry with herself and she'll start hitting herself and biting her foot or her hand and I'd tell her to stop it and she'd give me the hand to hold it for a while and she'd be fine for a while or I'd take her out of the cage for a while and then I'd put it back in she'd start the same thing or cover herself up with the blanket and start just uh, kind of rocking herself and the, she used to love stuffed animals but lately all she does is rip them to shreds and just I, I'll come home from work and there's nothing but pieces left of the stuffed animals she just doesn't play with them anymore she just rips them apart Nothing was said. There was no information at all. Uh, if we learned by trial and error. No. Only way I found out anything about it, and I didn't know much then, of what we found on the computer. That's more or less what we got our knowledge is what we could find in the computer. Basically, they were telling us that they had health papers on her, and she had been tested for the herpes B virus and tuberculosis, and. There was a few other things, but I can't remember for sure what they were, but they gave us health papers on her when we got her. No, not really. Um, I was really surprised that when I went into further research on the internet, well, research period, that a lot of, none of the stuff was told to me, the, especially the Reese's macaque is one of the worst that you could choose as a pet. They had advised me that uh, the Reese's macaque was the most intelligent monkey, which they are, but they said that they were supposed to be, as far as like ha having a family monkey as a pet, that they would be the best breed to have. And I found out in the long run that I was lied to. She had just told me that she should be tested for TB, that when I got her turned to a vet, which I did, and she was negative. Uh, the vet also did blood screening work. Um, she had said that she would be in diapers for a long time. The biting, you know, at what age, you know, would they start biting and the teeth and how strong they could be and uh, just a lot of how the cleanliness of them, how much work goes into that to keep down the clean, you know, the cage cleaning, the diaper changing and the smell that reaps throughout the home. just. And if they get it on it on them, they don't want it, so they're going to smack it around. It goes on your floor, the walls, everything. So there's, there was a lot that I was not told about it. There was another place that we had contacted that we were going to send her to, but after further investigation, decided not to. And at that time, we found your primate rescue and decided that that was the best place to go, that you had, you know, better facilities and qualifications and everything. So then we stayed online with you. I'd gotten back on the internet and started looking for places that I could 
send my little girl to, where she would have a better place, be around her own kind, get proper food, diet, medications. So I'm, I'm out. I love her. She's like one of the family. She's like my baby girl. But I want life better for her. It's unjust just to, to satisfy myself and continue doing to her what she's the way she's living. It's been an experience I'll never forget, and I'll always miss him. But he needs to be with monkeys in a house or in a cage, not in a house. He needs to have trees and running, and he needs to be around his own kind. He, I love him. I miss him. But it's best for him. You gotta do what's best for the monkey. I don't think monkeys belong in people's homes. I want her to go to a sanctuary, not a zoo. Or a game farm. And I don't want her to be used for research. And um, I, I have good memories. And I want to walk away with those better memories and not be left permanently scarred and have to live with a bad memory for the rest of my life. We're managing to get through this, is concentrating on Zoe and what's best for her. And it's very painful for us, for my daughter and myself. Um, we've loved her for nearly six years, and it's very difficult to get to let her go. You know, very hard, but it needs to be done. So, because she cries all the time, you know? and I don't think that's fair to her to be crying and being alone for so many hours that she is. And I know she's better off. I don't like to mistreat animals. I've always had animals, always, to the point where they would pass away and that would be it. I've never given animals away, and she's basically my first one. But I know it's for the best because she'll be in the environment that she has to be.